Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. There is science, and there is pseudoscience. Flat Earthers are often accused of using pseudoscience to say that we are not stuck to a ball that is spinning thousands of miles an hour through space. However, let's take a look at what the difference is between real science and the abstract mathematics which tells us we're on a ball. And we're told that we are stuck to this spinning ball Earth because it has a certain mass. And we are told that mass attracts mass. This is a completely abstract concept, although we do know that things will drop through the air at a certain rate of speed. That's not denied by flat earthers. So there is science and mathematics that can describe the falling of objects through the air. However, let's have a look at how density is what governs the way things work here on Earth and show how this idea that the ball Earth having a specific mass in a specific volume and therefore giving us or everything a specific weight because of the volume of this ball Earth is simply an abstract mathematical concept. It is not science, it is pseudo science because there is nowhere that we can see that mass attracts mass. Now there's no denying that there is much beauty in the fact that one liter of water weighs one kilogram and that we have a metric system based on nature the weight or the mass if you like of one kilogram of water and we know that this will also fit into uh, 10 centimeters cubed if we put it into a cube but uh, we can see here this liter of water is weighing about a kilogram and we'll put a kilogram of water in it All right, so we know that's one litre. We also know that it's one kilogram. So we are told that because this uh, one litre of water has a mass that is being attracted to the mass of the Earth, which therefore gives it its weight, one kilogram, that this is proof of gravity. This is just a description of we can call gravity but what we cannot prove scientifically is that it is the mass of the earth making this water weigh one kilogram i've added another kilogram of water so there's another liter of water in there or another 10 cubic centimeters and we know that if we put something in like an egg that is more dense than the water it will sink to the bottom and the properties of water are always described in terms of density but of course people will say well what's holding the water to the earth that's gravity well yes okay there is an up and a down there has to be uh, but when it comes down to it everything that we can test here on earth everything we can observe scientifically all comes down to density we know that if we make this water more dense and we put salt in it then the egg will float on the top or we can try with something else uh, that might float an orange it's mostly water so it reaches an equilibrium with the water I can add a force and push it down isn't that interesting? I push down this and it becomes heavier.
Okay. So what does the orange really weigh? Once you're weighing it in water, it's a little bit different, isn't it? That'll be, that, let's try that. So the orange is about 10, 20, 30, 30 grams. No, 300 grams, I'm sorry, 300, <laughs> 300 grams. Okay, and we you know this was two kilograms, so I've got to bring it back in the way. All right, that's on the two kilogram mark. Where was it before? 300 grams. Okay. So the extra weight has been added, even though it's floating, and we push it down. So okay, there is some extra force. We don't have to call that newtons, we can call it kilograms of force or grams of force to push it down. But we are, un we are creating an imbalance in the equilibrium. This is the equilibrium. Let's try with our ball, Earth doesn't weigh much in the water and once it's submerged there is no more force so you can see my hand going in makes no difference it's submerging the ball and keeping it down requires a certain amount of force What's happening there is the water pushing back, is gravity pushing back, is the mass of the earth pushing back? What's happening? We're thinking about. Okay. The main point I wanted to make in this video though was when we take something fragile like a plant that stands up in the air and we have two kilograms of water that is supposedly pushing down its weight on the earth because of the mass of the earth attracting it then if I put this plant in it is not squashed or crushed by the weight of the water. This could be miles under the surface of the ocean and it would be having no problem standing up against all the weight of the water. It's just relative density. Again, you can ask what is keeping the earth I'm sorry, what is keeping the water stuck to the earth? We know that water has magnetic properties and we can also ask questions like where's the edge of space? Where does that end? What holds space in its place? Nobody knows, we can't answer it unless we start using abstract mathematical concepts and to tell us that we are on a ball that is spinning through the vacuum of space is not scientific because although we can talk about density and we can talk about forces we have nothing in science that tells us that mass attracts mass we have an attraction to the earth and we do not really know what that is but it's certainly not because the earth is a particular mass however if you want to describe it mathematically the sphere is perfect because then you have a container and then you can use algebra to work out 
what this container's volume could or should be. And the density within that volume, its mass, to dictate how we have an inverse square law of field like magnetism or electricity created. So we have in this pseudoscience of the globe, we have pilfering of real science and adaptation to a mathematical formula that is just abstract. We have the inverse square law of magnetism or electromagnetism or light and this can be adapted and used for anything except in the case of the globe it's been used and adapted to something that we cannot ever prove, create, manipulate in any scientific way. There is nothing to tell us that mass attracts mass. But it would be interesting, wouldn't it, once you break free from the idea that we are in a solar system being flung about a sun, we are free to think of other ideas, such as maybe we are on a piece of earth that is floating in an infinite plane of water. If you can have infinite space and you can't tell us where the edge of space is or what's after space or how space was created or what happened before the Big Bang, that's all pseudoscience. So once you are free from these scientific ideas, we can consider things that maybe water is the most common thing in the universe and we are just a bubble or a plane of matter semi-submerged in an infinite plane of water. Why not? Thank you very much.